big good afternoon to you wherever you are watching us from on Facebook and YouTube also on Twitter at Metro TV Ghana Instagram at Metro TV Ginge. This is good afternoon Ghana live from Studio C at Regina Accra. The Aquia Bohema Studio. What to talk about Ghana's economic woes? Why do we seem to be struggling to tackle the menace here on Good Afternoon Ghana today? When I come back from this quick 10, I'll tell you who my guests are on the show. Stay with us. And already in the studio here at Regina Accra, the conversation has gotten started. Oh, my, my guest here on the show this afternoon, let me start with Wanda Madilo, development analyst and a member of the National Democratic Congress, NDC. Good afternoon to you and welcome. Great to see you here. I, I'm tempted to ask you what is in that gallon, but now I'll come back to you later. Kindly turn, turn on your mic whilst I speak to your colleagues here and I'll come back to you later. I have here also Alfred Abebi Okumi, who is a um, former parliamentary aspirant for Adenta and representing the MPP, correct, right? Yes, a Dentan constituency. A so a Dentan is a, a place in the Adentan constituency. Okay. So you have a Dentan constituency making the um, the, the the electorate. Mm. Then a Dentan is a town in the constituency. Great, and hopefully yes. you get to be educated more by Alfred this afternoon. <laughs> and also <laughs> joining you. me here is Bernard Muna, a political analyst and a man who. Is it new to our studios here on Good Afternoon Ghana? But Amuna, can, can I let you know your mic for me? Your mic, I can see your mic is off. And good afternoon to you too. Um, good afternoon. <laughs> I, see, I'm, I, I'm, I'm laughing because I was talking to him behind the scenes about how a gentleman told me here on Monday on Bottom Line that he has yeah. no pockets and that it's a bit difficult for Ghanaians here in Ghana. And he, tell, he tells me he is feeling okay. Can, can no, you I, I that? was wondering how, mm. but I can understand because you are. Uh, Dressed in your uh, Eurocentric attire. What do you mean by that? Otherwise, how any Ghanaian would imagine that this afternoon can be good, particularly so when obtaining lunch. But, but you told me that you, you're okay. I never said so. Mm. You were talking about economic hardship, and I said, why don't you talk about the Ghanaian economy mm. to just say hardship? coming at a time when the president says that money does not like noise. Oh, so we are making noise. Is that what you're saying? No, the president says money does not like noise. Mm. That means when you have money, you don't make noise. But when you don't have it, you have to make noise. And so in the balance of those who have it, like president and his family, they don't want noise to be made. Mm. And so you should reference that, look, the president was being sarcastic and insensitive to the majority of us who were or are poor, that money doesn't like noise to wit. Those who are affluent, they don't want their monies to be disturbed. To wit, when your mouth is full of food, you don't talk, you talk. An interesting feedback from Bernard Muna, who joins me together with other two guests here on the show this afternoon. Alfred, you just heard Bernard speak. He mentioned that if there's food in your mouth, you don't talk. That means when you are having enough in your pocket, you don't talk. Contrary to what the president is saying. Uh, How is that contrary? That is precisely what the precisely. president means. Mm. Because if there is no money in the system, you have to talk. You have to explore other ways to which money can come in. But if you keep quiet when there is hardship, there is absence of liquidity, how are you going to overcome the deficit? All right. Alfred. So, um, I mean... <laughs> I understand where Bernard is coming from, but it's important that we take what the president said from contest. Uh, he said that he, before he even made the statement, he, he got to the paragraph where he was talking about speculation. So the whole point was about speculation, why our CD is uh, struggling against the dollar. So it would be, I think it would be a little bit insensitive, Bernard, if we take what the president said out of contest. I mean, uh, people have spoken about it. People felt the president could have said something better or could have left that out of his speech. A lot of people are even playing around it on social media. But let's, let's, it's important that we go back to the contest to which he was saying what he said. He was talking about the fact that 
our uh, speculations in our currency. Mm. And he even made reference to a WhatsApp um, audio that somebody was uh, saying. Oh, he didn't say that. Bernard. No, I, I, no, I am but, amazed Bernard, that, you, Alfred, you, you, no, you would want to mm. Bernard, make a defense of this. Bernard, See. Not, Bernard, See. See. Uh, Alfred, it's not See. about See. defense. Let, let it's let about the let, context let, Alfred, relax. which the Alfred. president said So that. back in 2012, we had the current if vice you, president. If you go on that let me kindly tell you. The Adentan constituency will not vote for you. We come back to that. We come back to that. But then let me take Alfred back to 2012, where the current vice president, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, made this tweet. Let me And it says... The government is blaming speculators for the fall in the city instead of tackling its depreciation. This is back in 2012. Yes. And now here we are, you explaining the president's speech, are saying that it's, um, I mean, linking it to speculation. Is that, is that not contrary to what the vice president said 12, uh, in 2012? Well, um, I wouldn't want to... I'm, I'm not saying this, actually. Under, I just understand what, his, his, understand his what you're here. saying. I wouldn't want to speak about what happened in the past. <laughs> we have to face what's happening to us now. People are struggling. Things are not going. How, the how way. different is now from then? No, I'm not. I'm not going to talk about uh, what happened in the past because the past is gone. Now people are struggling. Things are happening. What message first can you give to the people for them to understand that you are going to do something about it? Senior Bernard, you look at him. You see that he's a well-meaning Ghanaian. He wants things to get better. My senior brother here as well. First of all, you have to let people understand that this and this is the situation. Sometimes when you are not in government, we do politics with a lot of things. We, someone can say something and you decide that what a person said doesn't really make sense. But when you face the reality of what's going on, you come to terms with everything. Mm. And the point we've got into, understand, we can, we can all do politics with it. We can all say this uh, the president is not doing well. Members of parliament are angry. Uh, there are a lot of things that are happening that we can't even say it on radio mm. or, or even on TV. You want to find but, solutions to all this, and that's yes. why we're here this afternoon. Yes. So you hold on to your thought. I'll come back to okay. you just gather. Let's try and gather all our solutions, how we are going to try and help government fight all this menace or one for better with Kanka. I understand. Uh, let me come to you there. You, you, you came in the studio with a, with a brown... <laughs> Well, with a brown gallon, where, yeah, where that, are you going to? Are you on a journey or something? I, I see sometimes you, you get the feeling that even the MPP themselves do not seem to know that we're in a crisis when you tend to defend the indefensible. The president goofed, said point blank, he goofed. Now, why do we say the president goofed? You know, in all that his litany of you know rhetorics that he put out that day, you don't see a certain urgency in addressing our crisis mm. that we have at stake. What's the urgency we're talking about? Today, 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 today. How much are we selling a gallon of uh, diesel? A gallon of diesel is going for how much? 106 Ghana cities. It used to be 13 Ghana cities. Today, it's 106 Ghana cities. You won't address that. You say because of noise. That's why the CD or the dollar is misbehaving. A gallon of petrol today, if you go any, to any of the elite stations, you'll get it for 81 Ghana cities. This, this. It won't take you from here even to maybe, be, you know, to, to, his constituency. to Adenta, to his constituency in Adenta. In any case, they don't seem to see the urgency of the situation. Listen, in any other jurisdiction, any proper jurisdiction, the president would have resigned. That would have been the platform for him, for him to resign, including the vice president. Because... They have filled this country to the point that we even now prefer to say that the dark days are even better off than what we have today. Unfortunately, that's what people are feeling. Unfortunately, that's where we have gotten to. And you don't seem to see that, that you know, people feeling amongst them. They, they still think that we should be clapping for them for this abysmal performance, for this corruption that they have, you know, thrown this country into, for, for the chaos that they have caused this country, in this country. Look, even if a new government takes over today, it's going to take us some time to get back on course. You are talking about a, a, an economy at this stage that is in inflation of double digits, not just double digits, in 30%, 40% and going. You are talking about a country who, is, who cannot manage its economy. Today, when, before they came to government, they said 4.6 to a dollar was so bad. Today, we are hitting 15 Ghana cities. And is that okay? 
and you don't seem to see any remorse. Mm. Nobody seems to be telling us the way forward. Even when opposition parties, opposition members, me, people of well-meaning standard in this country, people who understand economy, tell us you that, look, you are running into crisis. We have a crisis. We still have a president who wants to deny everything, but for himself alone, he is the best president we have had in the, in the Fourth Republic, right. including even the common rule of law that he, he, he rolled on to come into power. That is also a waste in this country today. Right. So we have a crisis, and, and, and in my later presentation, I'll tell you why I brought this to the studio. I'm really interested in that. And so this is the real later. noise. This is the real noise. I'll come Not to you us. Later. Not insulting us. I'll come to you, Wanda. Now, <laughs> I've had three of my guests share their views. Wanda being the last person. Uh, we heard from Bernard Mwen and also Alfred Kumi. But now, let's go to former president, John Dramani Mahama, who says and claims to have some solutions to Ghana's economic woes. Take a look at this on your screen. And as you can see on screen, according to the former president, John Dramani Mahama, proposed solutions to Ghana's economic crisis. It says, reducing the public debt, debt service obligations, and creating fiscal space. An immediate moratorium must be placed on all non-concessional borrowing. The second one says, government must actively converse uh, bilateral partners for more concessional financing and grants. The third one says there must be a stop to central bank financing of government above the 5% threshold. The current printing of money to finance government deficit is further fueling inflation. And here, this one says cutting costs, reducing waste, and spending wisely. It says suspension of non-essential projects, cut down of the size of government, which we heard the president say during his speech um, last Sunday. He says, so, so, we, we come to that, don't worry, we come to that. We, we come to that. Now, secretariats and agencies like Free SHS and uh, One District, One Factory must be scrapped off. The third one there from the, the former president. This one says, stabilizing the currency, cutting the import bill and job creation. The country must try to produce more of the food we consume. Cutting down on excessive import as well comes seen for the former president. And this one says, leveraging the energy and petroleum sector, revamp the Tema oil refinery and ensure that the refinery processes domestic crude oil. From the former president, John Dramani Mahama. And here on your screen are some statements that were made by the president, Nana Adonam Kukufuado, on measures outlined by the president Kufuado on economic recovery. The first one says, restore uh, macroeconomic stability through an IMF-supported program. Hmm. Tackle cost of living by working to stabilize prices of petroleum products through new supply arrangements. Encourage traders to tone down uh, profiteering, which is contributing to inflationary pressure. Which I'm interested in that. How are we going to do that? How are we going to be encouraging traders to come down when it comes to their pricing and all that? Restore debt stability by reducing debt to GDP ratio to 55% by 2028. Improve national <laughs> can they allow me? Improve national resources and liquidity by raising revenues from 13% to 18% to 20% of GDP and pursue inclusive growth while protecting the poor. From the president, Ekufuado, this one says energy sector reforms to reduce the risk of the sector to the budget. Uh, reduce budget rigidities by capping statutory funds, continuing with efforts to reduce central government expenditure through budget cuts of 30%. Start the process of discouraging importation of rice, poultry, vegetable oil, fruit juices, etc. This one is really interesting and one of the biggest solutions we can have to our uh, problems. Tackle currency speculations to limit uh, volatilities to the city and show no haircuts to treasury bill holders in the debt restructuring strategy. And if you're wondering what haircuts are, is about, it's been going on on and on and on and on and on what exactly haircuts means. We'll tell you what it's about. I mean, a couple of discussions have been going on about no haircuts, haircuts or not. We'll tell you what it means. Mm. To the joke that you just read from the president. Man, before, before, before you go on with that, what exactly were you looking forward to hear the president say on Sunday? Tell me about what you were expecting from him. One, the immediate dismissal of the finance minister and the cutting of his size of government. Mm. The finance minister, who has become the nemesis of the nation Ghana, should have been sacked on that day. 
And I'm sure you will see that majority of Ghanaians, including the MPP 137 in parliament, mm. or let me put it 135 in parliament, would have been clapping for the presidency. Don't forget that one of our own, um, uh, Kum, is unwell, and so he is the minister responsible for, 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 for chieftaincy and religious affairs. And of course, Ajwasafu is not in jurisdiction. So therefore, they are 135. I am sure that they will be clapping for the president for saying that, look, mm. he has dismissed the finance minister. That alone would have augmented, too, that he has cut down the size of his government. The size of his government, that now includes deputy CEOs up to three, four in some institutions. CEOs that used to just have one CEO without a deputy. Today we have one CEO with about two, three deputies. You have various ministries that are overbloated with the deputy ministers. The size of the government itself is unnecessary. What the people of Ghana would have been eager to hear is that President Akufado would tell us from henceforth, the special seat without which he cannot go for any function, that the V8 that has been carrying it and consuming fuel, that V8 will cease to convey his seat any longer, and that he will be sitting on public seat. You see, it is an attack on the purse of the people of Ghana and an insult for us to see that the seat that the president will sit at functions, including when he's coming to your studio, he will be carrying it, it will be carried and chauffeured. There is a policeman attached to that V8. There is a driver attached to the V8. There is a special person that will sit and, and observe this. So all these people are paid simply because the president has to go and sit on a particular chair. In this crisis, the president is still comfortable sitting on a chair. The president wants to become a chief. Even chiefs, when they are going for functions, they leave their, their stools and their skins in their various places and go to sit on what is offered them at the places that they have been invited to. It is only President Akufado. Mm. He is doing as if he is the only person that has become president of Ghana. President Nkrumah never traveled this country with a seat. Do you understand? Prime Minister Buzia did not travel this country with a seat. When you come to President Lema, he did not travel this country with a seat. Jerry Rollins did not go anywhere with a seat. Kufuor did not. Atta Mills did not. And, of course, John Mahama did not. What is wrong with Akufadu at this particular time? When people are suffering, you are still going around carrying your seat you don't feel that the cost of conveying your seat alone is so much more than three people's income? And do you see the kind of convoy the president travels in in this economic term with? Do you see the convoy? The last time somebody was counting the vehicles in the video, they counted up to 71. We have seen presidents in this country. Mm. President Atamils drove around this country with less than six vehicles. Uh, all right, all right. And I'll so wait. when the president is talking about this, and look, look at the things the president has said. The president is talking about what? That he's going to ensure macroeconomic stability through an IMF-supported program if the IMF fails to come out with a support. All right. The I'll same wait. president who does not believe in an IMF as a panacea mm. to the economic solutions in this country, all of a sudden sees an IMF as the ultimate solution to the problems of this country. And now all of us have to hang our hands in right. despair, but, but awaiting I'll, I'll, I'll a possible solution from the IMF. People have gone to I'll the wait. IMF for I'll, more I'll, than three months. You. I want to hear you speak. I want to sandwich you. I mean, so, tell me. So, you know. The, uh, hold on. Now, former President Mohammed's um, solutions, as he has actually stated, and against what it was said by our president on Sunday? Well, um, I, I believe that when an issue comes up, everybody has different ideas. There's a saying in which our- Which we are entitled to. Yes, which we are entitled to. So President Mahama is entitled to her solutions. And because first of all, um, we have different ideologies. That's why you have President Mahama in the NDC and President Ekufuado in the MPP. But I want to speak and to... And Bernard Mona in the PNC. <laughs> and Bernard Mona in the PNC. But I want to speak to something uh, Uncle Bernard said. He was talking about the convoy. Uncle Bernard, do you be, you, if you be frank, last, the last time the president was uh, on a trip, I joined. You joined the convoy. And it's not as if... All the cars, you find out that most of the cars that follow the president is just about five or so. Mm. Mm. 
and you have ministers. So are you telling me that? Don't sit and insult anybody in this studio in this era of anger. We see the number of vehicles that move with the president from the presidency. What are you talking about? Let's allow Alfred to make his point. One I'll come to you. You have time. You ask yourself, how many ministers join when the president is gone? Why would they even join? They have no work to do. It's sometimes people... The president is saying that his ministers are so many that they have no work to do and that when he has to go anywhere, have, the ministers you, you have see, to go have, with him. It's not... Th this is the point I'm making. Mm. I mean, you don't this have is just Let's have videos from the presidency moving with the president. You have people that are looking for favors, people that want oh. to speak with the president, people... Oh. The, so I, 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 I'm, I'm saying I'm that... I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. The president's convoy has people who want to speak to him joining. Is that what you're saying? They are seeking favors. They are seeking favors. Just as, just, just as a businessman can go to parliament to go and want to influence the MPs with money so that they can step down. You come, you come to that. Don't worry. You come to that. You but have then to, to understand Alfred properly. You are saying <laughs> that. Let, let me tell you something. Carrying the, the president. A, we, we are joking. Number of cars following it because these are persons who are. You people are toying with people's lives. You are telling me you have seventy cars. That is from the presidency following that. You ask yourself, even at the presidency, how many uh, V8s are there? How many Land Cruiser V8s are there? Have you been able to and, count? Have you counted? And how many drivers? No, let's logically. How many drivers are in the presidency to have 70? You are saying the last time you counted. How many drivers are in the presidency to have 70 have you also of them? Join. Have you, have you also, do you have, do you have, do you have that figure? video? No, you can I, just I'm count. Coming, I'm coming. Um, I'm coming. No, do you have a counter figure? Coming. Do you have a counter figure to um, that? I, I can say on authority that not even six, and uh, not even when more than six. When the vice president recently mm. traveled to the Upper West the region, are as many yeah, as forty. The videos vehicles. are available, but you come out and you see yeah. ministers. So you are telling. Don't let, you see ministers? Don't you so see ministers uh, CEOs? Don't you yeah, see don't, party people? All right. So uh, let, let, me give, let me give let me give an let me give an example. No, no, let, let me give an example. The last time the president went for a tour, you see party chairman and the rest all following. I see. Uh, so what what are you saying? Are they of do party chairman work in the presidency? Uh, driving the uh, Okay. What are you, we, are you we, 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 we that get you. The party chairman that cannot afford V8. We get you. No, Bernard. No, let's. No, let's we get you. Bernard, well, you let drive me, a V8. Don't we drive get a V8. you. Bernard, you drive a V8. Uh, no, I don't. No, no. Be honest. Don't. You I don't. We really have journalists that drive V8. I so don't. For ever. I don't. Do you I don't. Do you no. But if I'm driving it, if I'm driving it, it's not even with government money. Let's not make someone driving a V8 as though. It's not, not not in the, look, People go to Zambia and listen to the Zambian president to tell you what he is doing. When he came into office, and immediately they brought to him about 180 million to sign for the importation of vehicles so that they can swear him in with those vehicles. He asked whether the previous president was not using vehicles. So no, and I'm he declined. Asking, no. Listen, he well, went around to tell his ministers that look, how many of you have bought your, for yourselves a V8? And because you cannot buy for yourself a V8, why do you think that that should become your standard if you are in government? A good pickup should do your job for you. If you have a president that is considerate of the plight of the people of, that, that, of the country, that president will take austere measures that starts from him. But you have a president who does not feel that he must be part of the austerity. I tell you that the president still carries his seat. All right, Bernard. True or yes? Let's not listen to one another. You cannot confirm. You must confirm what the president carries and what the president carries. It's a national security matter. I'll come back to you later. I'll come back to you. Again, you see the difficulty. Don't joke with the lives of the people. The people are joking with the lives of the people. But Bernard, let's be honest. You had your time to make a point. I'll come back to you. That's fine. Thank you. I keep making the point that the people who have led us into this mess mm. do not themselves think that they are at fault. And that's where we are where we are. Now, I can, I can give you statistics. Do you know that at the, for all the, you know, the executive arm of government, eh, in every week, okay, government spends 18,000 gallons of, 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 of diesel and 22,000 gallons of petrol every week in running so-called flamboyant government machinery. And that comes up to 1.9 million cities for diesel, 1.7 million cities for petrol in a week. So in a year or in a week, you're talking about 3.7 million Ghana cities spent on fuel. 
if he cares to know, and he's the one trying to defend how many cars follow the president so, and all that. Then you, you, you aggregate that to a year, and it's 192 million Ghana cities spent on fuel. For what? Carrying seats. For what? Fanfare. For what? Going to cut sword. For what? Going to attend functions. And you have 72 member convoy. And he wants to know how many drivers are in the flagstaff house. There are 114 drivers at the flagstaff house. Check your records if you care to know. There are 114 drivers at the flagstaff house. Ketsi Ekufuado, uh, 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 excuse me, the president. And that's where we have gotten to. Now he talks about when the president is moving only about three cars. If a minister follows, that's our money. If a chief executive follows, that's our money. If a state agency, you know, MD, whatever follows, that's our money. He shouldn't, you know, make it look as if the people are following on their own accord and all, including he himself. Including himself. He's so a he has, beneficiary. So of you are yeah, telling me and that. And so I want to put like things on record. Party now let's make progress. Government. Let's make how, progress. How, how do I benefit? When they are doing official government say. functions, you we are you are there. Say. When, when I'm going to support that, we, we have consistently said. We have consistently said. Even before now. functions. Alfred, can you just. You mean those functions where President described me as his friend? I'm not traumatized. Let's be fair with it. Now, when you tell me that the beneficiary, we have a government that is so insane sensitive that they don't even see that they are the real problems. For instance, how nice would it have been for the president to have announced on that day that, look, my finance minister is fired, my economic management team is being reconstituted, I'll let you know in due course what, what, what is up and all that. Oh, who, what's wrong about, about that? To the extent that the president is bold to tell his own party people that, oh, well, um, let him finish the IMF negotiations and then lay the budget. Lay the budget for who to implement. Lay the budget for who to implement. That's first, number one. Number two, you have a finance minister who thinks that he's the, he's the rise and fall of everything. And so every decision has to be taken by him. That's why you get to that conclusion. Because mm. we know so that we uh, an that? economic management uh, team is not made up of only finance minister. By the and, president's and putting continuous together endorsement of the finance minister. It should be a collective thing. It's a teamwork. So it's not a finance minister. It's not in the wisdom of that the finance to, minister alone to present the budget to, to parliament that one. or to even go <laughs> to IMF negotiations. And that's where we are. The president himself has lost the touch with the people. Mm. He's lost touch with the economy, the reality of the economy. He doesn't even understand what is happening around him. And that's where we are. Where we are. Do you know that the, this same government told us that? They were managing COVID so, 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 so well that all the countries around us are so bad at, at, at managing COVID. And that they were doing it so, so that the aftermath of COVID, we don't slip into situations like this. Unfortunately, the country that claims to have managed COVID so well, which is my country, Ghana, is the one suffering the most. Cote d'Ivoire is not going through the kind of crisis we're going through. Togo is not going through the kind of crisis we're going through. Libya is not, even Libya is not going through the kind of crisis. Tanzania, whose president claimed that there was no, you know, Magufuli or something of the sort, he even passed on in the process. He, their government are not going through this kind of shameful, you know, results that we are putting out. Zambia Today, that was on the verge of being taken over me, by, 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 take, by China me, yeah, has overcome because let, they let have a president that is please, willing please, to cut to the size. All right, well, I'll come back to you in Benad as well. But let me quickly go on, on, on on your WhatsApp number, I have this quick message here. This one, it says, um, that man with MPP defend Leonardo, he, don't, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Shame on you. Wow, that's, that's quite harsh, Alfred. <laughs> yeah, but it's harsh, you read it. <laughs> now, <not> from, <laughs> <laughs> now not from General Otega says, good afternoon. Capitalism has failed to deliver social economic justice in the third world countries due to the world economic order that undermines the voice of third world countries in equitable policy decision making. Now, the capitalist ideology is neon colonial mechanism to sustain the looting of our resources. It's the economies of the capitalist apostles that are struggling in the current global economic chaos. Hey, big, big English. All right, I'll come back to that later. No one says, Good afternoon, my brother. Tell the MPP guy that he is not feeling the heat because he is in, in government. God bless him. <laughs> I am no, a Apostle Dennis. Apostle Dennis is you offer it. <laughs> the MPP um, representative is doing harm to the issue than Ekufuado is doing to Ghanaians from Jude in Adenta. Wow. Offer it. Yes, I want to do about the Adenta you are, issues. You are doing harm to uh, more, than, more than what Ekufuado is doing to Ghanaians. I don't know if Alfred is living here in Ghana. I wonder if he is living a Ghanaian. Does he have any idea what the lay Ghanaian goes through? If the president is sense. Okay, I can't read them. Sorry. So it says, good afternoon to you all. I'm called Adnan watching live from Tamale, and I have enjoyed your program. See, Mr. President, I um, need to learn and know the importance of listening to Ghanaians' advice. 
if I were the MPP guy there, I wouldn't even come to the studio in the first place. Wow. Lala from who? Ali watching from Yindi. Hmm, MPP. Kill us. Okay. Don't worry, you're not going to die. Okay. So, so, I want to come back to Let me take a very quick turn. Okay, okay I want to come back. Fine. I want to tell viewers what exactly the hair, uh, haircut or no haircut means. It's been in the in news for some time now. We even mentioned it. The president mentioned it. When I come back from this very quick turn, I'll tell you what exactly the no haircut or haircut <laughs> really means. Still me here on Good Afternoon Ghana. We are back with more. We are live um, here on Good Afternoon Ghana. Welcome back. Now, as I told you earlier before the break, I was telling you that we're going to tell you what exactly haircut or no haircut means, as was stated by the president in his Sunday's um, speech to the country. So here you go. This one says, what is the meaning of haircut in stock market? In financial markets, a haircut refers to a reduction applied to the value of an asset. It is expressed as a percentage. For example, if an asset such as holdings of a particular government bond is worth 1 million Ghana city but is given a haircut of 20%, it means it is treated as though it has a value of only 800,000 Ghana cities. And so this is a video we are going to play to you coming in from um, former, former Vice President Kessler to Forsen. Take a look at this. The process of debt restructuring. Deputy. But for now, let's um, listen to the, the President of the land, Nana Adanko Kufado. All right, we apologize for that. We feed you with that visuals later. You I mean, might have seen it on Good Morning Ghana or even on Good Morning Ghana or any of the platforms here on <laughs> Metro TV. We bring it to you later <laughs> and more of that later here on No, it's because I didn't know where did it. You're getting a lot of comments. People are asking you if you are really in Ghana or you just came last night. Hmm. He carries Alfred, his. Mic is off. He, Alfred, your mic is off. Can you turn he it carries on? his was, chair everywhere. That, He's a happy Agu man. Bernard, Bernard, I'll come to you. Please. You see, Uncle Bernard Let's has been thoughts. distracting me that I'm not even able to make my point. You, ha you have the phone now. Please go on. My brother, we are at a place where Ghanaians are not happy. We are all not happy. Should I both well? And I was doing some calculations and I was like, wow, where have we got into as a country? I'm an MPP person. I have, I have, it has to... I have four here for you. You can... I, I, I'll take I it after that. that. <laughs> I'll take it after that. But notwithstanding... I have four for you. I have four for you. <laughs> notwithstanding, where we are as a country, I don't know one person, not even the president can come out and say, we are in a better place. We understand the situation. Ghanaians are angry. People are saddened. What's the way forward? I propose that... First of all, before you can come out and tell anybody that this is the way forward, mm. you have to look at measures that will restore hope to the common person. Because when, they are, uh, when we are in crisis or when there's crisis anywhere, people are not able to think straight. You have to have a clear message that puts people together. And so if I'm here today on Metro TV, Good Afternoon Ghana, I want, I want to encourage Ghanaians that we are not where we want to be. We are not where we used to be. But we should believe that a time is coming that things are going to get better. Mm. And Uncle Bernard, senior, whilst we are here, let's not fight or politicize what is going on. I don't believe we but are fighting here. No, this no, I'm, 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 no, I'm, I'm not no, saying. I'm not saying rhetorical. like fight literally. Rhetorical. But let's rhetorically, as you said, let's look at things that we can say. Yes, you can, you can do your politics with it. But every time we mount the platform to talk to people, let's always find that little point to encourage people. Let them know, yes, the situation is hard. We all agree, I accept it. And I won't stand here and say the situation is not hard. If the situation so let the is president hard, fire the finance I, minister. Why are you protecting him? See, I, I don't disagree with the president uh, firing the finance minister because you have 88 or uh, 95 members of the majority in parliament saying that the finance minister must go. Well, well, where, who, do you stand who, on, where do you stand on that? Well, you go? That, that, 
when uh, the Subin should MP, go? Should he go? Why not? What's he doing now? If as as like we've enjoyed, we've tasted you. Yes, Berima. They say speaking uh, in tree. There's a saying in tree. He said Berima beye bi wan beye nina. I've been saying it when I go on radio. I tell people, if it was in their good interest, write a letter to the president. Let him know that. You've been able to do your part. Uh, majority of the MPs that government does business with are not happy, so I want to go. Is it, is it, that, a, is it that easy reaching the president? It's not that easy reaching the your president. Your finance so the, minister cannot reach so, the president. So the, 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 I would say that no, no, come, at, at this point, the problem is not... <laughs> the problem starts with the finance Can minister. A, a lot of things would have been settled if he had resigned. Bernard would have been talking about resignation. That would have been... Another way to instill hope to the good people of Ghana. I won't be talking so, about at this point, when you have Bernard blasting and senior blasting from here, you, what, what can you say about that? Because even our own people are saying that the finance minister should go and he's not gone. These are the pleas of Ghanaians. N not as though MPs just got up and said the finance minister should go. Mm. They listened to the ground. They did right. their research. Right. So... These are things, they are difficult matters that you have to speak to. Mm. But the good of the party and the good of the government is always vital to us. All right. And so as of this morning on Good Morning Ghana here on Metro TV, uh, we had um, Honorable Collins um, saying that um, the entire um, number of majority... 135 of them. Have, I have told the president that the finance minister must leave. But here we are also hearing that as they are trying to have the finance minister leave his post... Some businessmen out there are also trying to induce these persons to make sure that he stays in power. Let me, uh, let me have you address that. Let, let me quickly say that the definition you put out mm. on haircut mm -hmm. cannot be completely true. Mm. When you're talking about haircut, it means an investment that cannot be recouped in its entirety plus the benefits that it's supposed to come with. Mm. That means you, might, you, you lose a certain part of it. And I'll give you three ways you can lose and it will be a haircut one is that the principal that you invested certainly you are investing because you knew a certain coupon rate mm -hmm. maybe you were to get about um, 20 percent per annum yeah and so you invested hoping that you get 20 percent per annum so if you invested say 100 million and at the close of the year, you are supposed to get 20%. You were expecting to get 120,000 exactly. or 1.2 million. Yeah. Right. So today, a haircut will come in a place where they decide that, no, we will be able to pay you only your principal, which is the 1 million. Yeah. But the interest, we are unable to pay. Yeah. And therefore, you lose the interest. That is a haircut. Yeah, I, I know a lady who showed me um, a message from her financial institution yesterday um, that... She's going to face that. So that is a haircut. Yes. So that is one way of obtaining a haircut. Another way of obtaining a haircut is that why? When your investment is matured mm -hmm. and you are supposed to go now and claim, roll it over then they tell you that, no, you cannot take your investment it's now. So it's been rolled over or it's elongated. Yes. That means that you are having a, a haircut because you did the investment targeting that you'll be able to now go and, and, and uh, on maturation, you'll be able to take it. When it was ready for you to go and take, they said that you cannot take it because you have to roll it over for another period. That is a haircut. The third haircut is that when the thing is matured and you have to go, you may not forfeit the interest, but you will not be paid the whole amount at, the, at a go. So they pay you in tranches. Say, okay, your money is matured, but you will be able to collect maybe 60% for now. Oh, no. The 40% will have to wait for, for another, another period. That is a haircut. Mm -hmm. In all these things, there is going to be a haircut. So when the president comes and tells you that there is not going to be a haircut, the president is lying. So, so ben, Even ben, the information ben, minister... The president ben. is lying. The president is lying because the minister, the minister responsible for information has now come to say that what the president means by there will not be a haircut is that people will not lose their principal. What it means is that even you are not losing your principal, your duration can be elongated. You can that. also lose the interest and with this kind accruing. Of and within the period of inflation, if you are even getting your principal, assuming you invested in, 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 in January. In January, yeah. In January, a bag of cement was around mm. 38 Ghana cities. Yeah, mm. Today, we are 95. talking about 78 Ghana cities. No, 95. In, fact, 95 yeah. in what? 95. So if you recoup your investment today, 
you will not be able to buy the number of bags of cement you buy. So that is a haircut. So when the president tells you that there is not going to be a haircut, this is a president that cannot be trusted. And I have said time without number, that when you have a president, that in times of crisis, he cannot even speak truth to the people. How do you expect us to have confidence in the president? A president that comes to tell us that, no, you see, we are going to reduce our debt to GDP ratio to 55% by 2028. Indeed, Akufado. Wonder. <laughs> Let me come to you. Uh, you know, the, we keep talking about the issues, and I, I believe that one of the key things lost in this government is sincerity, even to themselves. I think Shakespeare says something, if I'm not mistaken. He said, but for nothing, be true to yourself. Mm. At least. <clears throat> one, one nice love man. Uh, agree <laughs> that. Agree. <laughs> agree that. Mm. You are in a mess. Look, it's a good time for the president to call for all the economic brains around town. Look, listen, there are even economics who are not domiciled in Ghana, abroad, willing to come and help us, to rescue us. Because we are getting to Zimbabwe, where we'll be loading money in wheelbarrows to buy No, bread. Somalia. That's what we are getting Somalia. to if we don't take care. Um, about um, two weeks ago, we were selling a bag of, uh, sorry, um, uh, a bucket of paint for four nine five. Then all of a sudden, within this period, it's going to seven hundred and seven. How about that? How many can afford that? So already there, there's a, enough. There's enough pressure on families. Homes are struggling to make ends meet. Then they are meted with this kind of economic situation. I think it's bad. Do you know, and I've been looking at a few things, do you know that under COVID, government in its, you know, sublimity, like trying to be, you know, very smart with us, has actually established what we call COVID secretariat at the Flagstaff House. Yes. Do you know how much was spent on the COVID secretariat? <laughs> 12 million Ghana cities. For the secretariat, 12 million has been spent on COVID secretariat. Including you buying just cars. To, to the, you saw cars in town at that time, mm. labeled COVID, brand new cars, COVID secretary, COVID this, COVID this, as if the, uh, the ministries, department, agencies that at the mm. time had actually grind to a halt because the president has asked for a lockdown, couldn't have released those vehicles to be used. Minister of Health has myriad of but vehicles. I, I remember at the time, I mean, has I, I remember the time government was asking other institutions to help with logistics like yes. vehicles and all that. And yet, government on the, on the side of all of us spent 12 million Ghana cities. Do you know that the current Auditor General's report says that 17 billion Ghana cities cannot be ac accounted for? The previous year, 12 billion cannot be accounted for. So you sit on this kind of in mess and you won't even rescue yourself. I mean, what does it take to fire the finance minister? That's the question everybody's asking. Is the list is the is the list of things that Ghanaians are asking the president for? Is the list of things that we are asking for? And 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 what does this do when you fire the finance minister? A lot of people are saying, ah, but it's not about <laughs> finance minister. It's not about finance minister. The finance minister is on record, including the vice president, is on record to say that to have said that they don't believe in the IMF negotiations, and yet the president is telling that this is the man leading the IMF negotiations. He said he didn't believe in the IMF. And that Ghana would never go to an IMF. He actually waved a white hanky in parliament saying that Ghana will never, to the glory of God, Ghana will never go to the IMF. Today we are going to the IMF in clutches. The man who, clutches. who does not We're going believe in, in the potency of the IMF is shamefully at the IMF. And you think that the IMF will have confidence in such a character? I mean, this one is not even for policy or I, I, So, so I've been issue, your, your lead person at the IMF is somebody that the IMF does not have confidence in. It, it, and so for bad. whatever it it's is, bad. the processes will delay because why? The same IMF, they have their representatives in Ghana. In Ghana yeah. They have cut all the tapes where the finance minister went round and got to Tamale in order to impose an obnoxious extortionist tax on the people of Ghana called electronic transfer slavies. Said that we are a proud people, the shining star of Africa. Whatever anyone says, Caleb and Joseph, we are not going to the IMF. Not my words. Then he encouraged his deputy, John Kuma, to go and stand in parliament and say that IMF will not go today, will not go tomorrow, will not go tomorrow next, and will not go forever. And I have a last the same people are leading you at IMF and they are the Ministry of Finance. You think that the IMF will respond to them? Must anybody even tell President that, look, the team that is going to the IMF, 
are the team, the last pe- group of persons that yeah, IMF yeah, will tolerate. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have us you know, speak. I'm going to have us give, give our, our last comment because you are behind time. But, but I just want to ask a question. I just want to ask okay, a question. And it will interest all of us. There, in, some few weeks ago or months ago, government told us that ELV was going to be the panacea to all these challenges. So today, do you know that I have not had any updates? You know, I haven't seen any major updates from the government telling us that, okay, so far we have realized so much from IMF, uh, so from the E-Levy, whether it has failed or it's working or they're going to review it or any of it. Nothing of the sort. Mm. How did the E-Levy that we so much believed in not solve this problem? So don't believe this told them will not pay, yes, and they, believe, did, they underestimated it, the vigor of the people of Ghana. The, the gimmicks. It doesn't work. It's not working. Uh, Kufado himself knows that this government has failed. It, we are only short of being called a failed state, if you care to know. Yeah. Uh, that, that's interesting. Alfred, we are wrapping up. A quick one from you before you can say goodbye. You know, um, let's, as I said, we are in challenging times. First of all, let's find ways to restore hope back to the people. Tell President not to be carrying yes. his chair around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's heard you, Bernard. He's heard you. He's heard you. But let's, let's find ways. You see, the common person, the common Ghanaian, is suffering. But any time we see that chair, we are get suffering. angry. We are in difficult times. The President has admitted that we are in crisis. Let's all come together as a people to resolve this problem. When, when COVID started, we had a lot of people who said what we are doing was wrong. Let's hope. Let's give the president time after his speech right. and everything. Mm-hmm. You not agree with everything the president said. Anything the president says, we all know that he could have done better because Thank there's you. always room for improvement. But let's believe in the process together, not just in the president, but in us as a people who believe that uh, we have that freedom and justice and that with that freedom and justice, we'll do well as a people. Thank you. Well, I'm told that the justice wing of the freedom and justice is in Madagascar. It's in Madagascar. First and foremost, look, the president must take the people of Ghana serious. Or let me put it this way, that the young people of Ghana are not angry enough. We are still engaged in our partisanship, and therefore we are hoping that something good will come out of it. And in our, our balance, they say that, look, when the market will be successful, it shows in the morning. At this stage... It is getting to sunset, and we are not seeing any hope that this market will be successful. President Akufuado is such a monumental failure that we need to rise up, hold each other's hands, and say that, President Akufuado, if you cannot cut down your size of government, if you cannot remove your minister for finance, if you are here pontificating that the problems to our current solution will be solved in 2028 when you will not be around, that means that you are telling us you have failed. President should resign. Since he cannot ask his people to resign, it is time for him to resign. If he cannot resign, let the members of parliament who are so incensed trigger the All impeachment right. processes All right. so that we can back it. All right, Bernard, thank you so much. Wanda? Well, I want to join calls for the resignation of the president. I think he's failed the good people of this country, including his own party, including his own family, including all the people who even supported him to become president in this country in the first place. I believe sincerely that the president on his bed every night knows that it's time for him to resign. And he should be resigning any time now. <laughs> Interesting one there. Alfred, you want to speak quickly? Yes. Please. So, no uh, Senior, I, I want all of us to join us and do a campaign for Ghana police. We know that we are in the society with Ghana police, unlike the military, they help us. They are our ordinary security and we need to pray for them and also plead uh, with government and authority to help them with their conditions of service and their uniforms. When the Ghanaian people are Thank suffering you. You and so the police are the ones that uh, the president unleashed to Bena. brutalize innocent citizens when we are going on, on, on you. protestation, Thank you, so you, you want so us to do what for them. Watching. Good afternoon, Ghana. How many times have they not beaten us? Clues. I'm closing. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Good afternoon, Ghana here on Metro TV. I will join the studio by Wanda Madilo, development analyst with the NDC, and also um, Alfred Abebio Kumi, former parliamentary aspirant for um, Adent- Adenta. Thank you, Adenta. And also, um, also, also in here with Bernard Mona, political analyst. And I'm wondering if there will be another, another walk 
to tell the president that we are, oh, we are struggling. Day, no, no, they, no, no, it's and always planning a On walk. the Saturday, uh -huh. Martin Pebu is leading the Kumi Preku phase be there. two. Right. So and on the 15th to the 17th, on the 15th to the 17th, three days continuous, we shall be marking up in the ground. What is a good afternoon, bye.